Hey there. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloweeny, weeny, weeny. Guess what? It's time to attack the uh, proud and the arrogant who have no ground to stand upon. <laughs> and now this next guy, uh, his uh, name is David Wood who has spit in my direction already. David, I love you, but you're the proud and the arrogant who has no root <laughs> or branch to hold on to because I connect all the dots of prophecy. Did you know, David, that prophecy is the way that God is going to build his kingdom age? You should because David says this, language steps in where the angels of experience fear to tread. Very good quote. And he says that we all have this pen in our hand and this blank sheet of paper and whatever we want to rewrite for ourselves is absolutely possible and i agree to disagree with you david could you disagree agree to disagree with me or is you going to give me the middle finger <laughs> The Bible says all who come saying that Jesus Christ Almighty came in the flesh is of God, but you give me the finger already. And so it's time that we need to realize that little submersible was propped up and ready to go. And the little submersible will be the brain set adrift if there's any freedom left at all. And so we need to realize that everyone is waiting for someone else to go first. That is what David uh, Wood has said. And it's time to go first, David Wood. Apologist, Acts uh, 17. And I got to tell you, people, I love his video. His testimony it is miraculous. And please watch the testimony of Anton LaVey, the writer of the Satanic Bible. <laughs> because he met the Lord Jesus on his deathbed. And he said, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? And it was too late. He could not do anything else except adjust his little horn. It's falling off. Hey, guess what? If you guys are willing to adjust your horn, there we go. We'll have a good halloween -y. And I got to say, hey, David, I love you in the name of Isa Yeshua, Jesus. But it's time to pull down religion. And so I come at you and I challenge you to a debate because you cannot win. You have no root or branch left to hold onto, as it is said in Malachi 4. And it's time that the kingdom age covenant has come to Israel and all mankind as it is correctly addressed. And I accuse you, David Wood, of having a false god. Because <laughs> I am Elijah. And how you have a false god is three ways. Number one. You do not have the God of the Bible. God says, I am the God of all mankind. Jeremiah 32, 27. And Jesus, the correct Jesus, says, I am the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. John 10. Right there. Uh, wrong answer for both for Christian God. And then next to that, you got a respect of man God, a sinner God, who is saying to all his people, don't do as I say, do as I do. I can have a respecter of man position and love only the Christian best. Send everybody else who doesn't believe that uh, I am love, send them to hell to rot and rot and forever and burn in agony because it makes me so happy. That is justice. <laughs> so you death Definitely got a false Christian God who is a respecter of man and favoritism, which he has never had. And I accuse you, David Wood, of representing as an apologist a phony religion that stole the kingdom aid covenant. <laughs> you stole it from uh, Israel.
Israel. And then you dared all your people, said, and we are Israel, and we are all families of Israel, and we are all mankind, as you erased uh, the Kingdom Age covenant uh, addressees that were properly given correctly. God was smart. He knew who he was writing his Kingdom Age new covenant for that was never to be given until the latter days, David would. It say so in Jeremiah 31.1. And in Jeremiah 1.10, God's tearing down all kingdoms of man's imaginations because Elijah has come and is insisting on his literal interpretations of Bible prophecy. He admits much clamor and opposition from the likes of Nobody like you who will never say, come on, let's do it. Let's have a debate Be for the love of God and for the love of earth so we can learn how we're all going to get along in the sandbox. And so in this hour, you got a respecter of God, who, uh, God who's not even a God. And then you got even uh, a God of conditional love when conditional love has never, ever uh, existed at all. God, uh, your God only loves you if and because and it's through works. But it's never been that through lest any man boast. So you want to say, Daniel, you need to come unto me and uh, have a good debate. And if you think you're going to win this debate, <laughs> wrong answer. And so, in this hour of love's greatest power, it is time to take off the gloves, because I am one from the north, one from the north who comes crying forth uh, from the ignorance of lovelessness that is called uh, religion. And it's time for all false gods to be torn down. No knee will bow with the name of Jesus. <laughs> David Wood. Because <laughs> you know why? Everybody's going to bow at Christ's name of love. That is the secret name of Mark IV to only which those who want to know know. Every knee will bow at the name of love. Every tongue will confess love. And guess what? I ain't being no devil about that. And guess what? The name of Jesus was a, just a distortional false god with condemnation put into his mouth from religion because a uh, Christian stole the promise as surely as Jacob stole it from Esau and tricked their father Isaac into thinking that uh, Jacob was Esau. Just as Christians have tried to trick the world into them thinking that they are Israel. But the only problem is, in the latter days, Israel would inherit all mankind, David would. Isaiah 54, 3. And in the latter days, they would have a brand new name appointed unto them by the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah 62, 2 said. And if he did not do that and accomplish that, as it is written in Isaiah 62, 2, don't you know, David would, he would be a liar if he could not perform that. But he has. And his name is Chrislam, for is Israel is their new name. And that is what Muhammad, a true prophet of God, said, uh, David Wood, uh, Acts uh, 17, Mr. Pharisee, Mr. Snake, who will not inspect uh, prophecy carefully and embrace all that's good like Second Thessalonians commanded. Don't you know, David Wood, that even Muhammad, the guy that you say is false, he was more true than you. Why, David Wood? Because Muhammad said you have no ground to stand upon David Wood unless you stand upon the gospel, the law, and all revelation coming to you from the Lord God. I am Elijah, and I stand in the ignorance of religion uh, for two years, uh, wasting my breath, having done everything in vain. Isaiah 49, 4. <laughs> I don't give a damn. What else did I have to do? But I know this. Nobody is believing in pr any prophecy, David Wood. Not you, not nobody. Where this world is going if it doesn't wake up. No birds, no fish, no mankind left. Isaiah uh, 24 says, so does uh, Zephaniah 1.1, 1, 1. Malachi 4.6, total destruction 
of earth. But guess what? Muhammad had it right. He said David would, and I dare you to try to repudiate this. He said in the Hadith that his people would be called by another name that sounds like Islam. It's Chrislam for your information. Why? Because that is would come when a book proves God's mercy upon mankind. And he knew that book was Jeremiah 31 that was foretold for the latter days in Jeremiah 31. 1. And it says in the word of God that when his word comes, all faith is obsolete, David would. So, and if you will stand against me, then you will become shit pie in the eye target of your majesty of majesties. In Malachi 2, David would, I like you to see this, this disputed that all Pharisees and all rotten uh, puke heads out there, he will take the diary of shit, dung, crab pie up your nose with a rubber hose till it pours down your throat like chocolate milk, like the diarrhea blowing through your ears and through your nose, running down smoothly. And if you stand against me, you will become an unloving, bold, cunning, audacious, unsociable, in courteous, inhumane, lawless, savage, who is ill-tempered, unrestrainable, a worthless man, deaf to advice, foolish, full of acts, unteachable, who thinks that he is leading the truth. <laughs> Because then you would be on the side of uh, not wanting people to believe the gospel truth, which would just make them love your savior a whole hell of a lot more. <laughs> and so then you would be uh, demoted into one who is unfair, has no participation with any other uh, one challenging your narrow-minded worldview of religion because you would become one not trusted in any of your agreements, one with whom there would never be any peace. You'd become covetous, lawless, and unfriendly that you would not even respond to my challenge for the love of people, for the love of your own children. Know you not uh, that the children that have bore you much peace, joy, and happiness will all die according to the word of God. Uh, even Jesus said that if his word was not going freely again, only his word could cut these days short, David. Uh, Matthew 24, 22. But if his word is not said, then we're in deep doo-doo. And I tell you truly, David, would because the covenant has now been given, uh, as Hebrews 8 says, God is saying to you and to all people, I am your God. You are my people. I forgive all your iniquity, and I will never remember it. Sending Satan, Diablo, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles straight to the pit for 1,000 years because he had been the accuser of the brethren day and night before the Lord telling him all about our sin. How could God have given uh, his covenant saying, I forgive your iniquity, will never remember it if he's right there saying yada, yada, yada. So it's time to realize that if you stand against this, David Wood, uh, you, there is no winning in any uh, apologetic uh, debate with me. And I'm unapologetic about that truth because you would just become increasingly uh, sedacious, faithless, and disorderly in all of your message. And uh, by standing on the wrong side of this, you would become profane, polluted, indecent, destructive, murderous, illiberal, abrupt, like you used to be before your conversion on to love. And then once again, you'd become brutal, slavish, cowardly, and temperate as you enter the land of the walking dead, trying to prove your narrow-minded, obsolete religion that has now come. Because I preach only the word of unconditional forgiveness, unconditional love, for there has been no other. Wide is the way to hell, and it's paved with our conditional love, David would, where we practice every day rationalizing, justifying why it's okay not to be loving, why it's okay not to be uh, happy and joyful and smile for people. We'd rather take a bite out of them.
uh, road rage. Everybody's a road rage people. And so in this day, if you stand against me in a debate, uh, you would end up being more increasingly inharmonious, dishonest, disobedient, obstinate, tricky, swindling, insincere, insincere uh, suspicious. You would experience new levels of hatred that are absurd and very difficult to detect, difficult to avoid, nothing but destructive, because then increasingly as you slowly commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, letting your love wax cold as you stand against his messenger of love, then you will become disproportionately more and more an unreasonable chatterer who could never win any argument with me. I am Elijah. I am Shiloh, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, one with milky white teeth because they are fake. And so increasingly, if you stand against me, if you dare, <laughs> you would just become more and more a gossip, a vain babbler, a flatterer, a fool, kissing asses, becoming a brown noser with people that will believe your brand of obsolete religion. And so it's time to give in and concede that you could never win in a debate against me. Otherwise, you would just become inclined to delay, inconsiderate, improvident, imprudent, neglectful of good, unprepared, ignorant of virtue. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. And if you stand against me and your love dwindles, then you'll always be proving yourself to always be in the wrong, always erring, stumbling, ill-mannered, ill-governed, because you'll become increasingly a glutton who is captive only to your own bad dreams and your stinky upper lip because you keep eating, licking the sour milk that's long ago gone, gone rancid. Now it's time for meat. Who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away? All these Christians in the world, including you, David Wood, <laughs> are jumping up and down. Jesus coming soon. Jesus coming soon. Jesus coming soon. No, he is not. Elijah has come first. I will restore all things. And don't you even think that there is anything else written because Jesus Christ, our majesty of majesties, our hero of heroes, icon of icon, the risen lamb of God, the roaring lion of Zion, he's calling each of our names to, to light up your love more. Otherwise, if you're going to uh, do what David has already been spitting at me like a viper, uh, then you become nothing but a double-tongued Pharisee infirm of purpose, fickle, a wanderer, a follower of others, yielding to impulses, open to the enemies of attacks because your love is dwindling and because you deny all prophecy. Be that will drive you mad and you'll become more and more increasingly satisfied and fond of life, fond of vain as glory, passionate, ill-tempered, lazy, a procrastinator, suspected and incurable would you be and increasingly full of evil jealousies trying to stand against me as you get the shit pie in your eye, despairing and full of tears for even thinking that you could ever successfully debate me in a friendly debate. And because it's time that if you believe the delusions of your mind that you could successfully de uh, defend your defenseless uh, preparation uh, against me, then you will be contriving evil against love in your heart, and you will be eager for all this graceful gain, increasingly becoming selfish and a willing slave, eager enemy, a demagogue and a bad steward of Christianity would you be by mocking the true Lord God who is rising as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man because the first was last and the last was first and the seven trumpets sounded first and now all nations have become the Lord and now God is pouring out his spirit of love upon all flesh all people who have their love alive as a little child and defend against this uh, that uh, it's never been 
to believe shit. Jesus said himself, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I believe. And he's going to say, get away. I didn't know you. You let me and you go out. Because David Wood, you're no damn good. I'm no damn good. No good. There is no good damn man. No damn good man. Defend against that, Romans 3.10. And so, what makes us good? And what makes you pretty good if you're going to keep your light of love on, David? If you do, then uh, we will never be under any condemnation. If we leave, the land of the walking dead where our love has become a noun uh, it must be alive as a little child a verb in motion uh, because if we get into the land of the walking dead then we only have a, an appearance of godliness but deny the power of love so if you stand against me you will uh, increasingly become stiff necked and outcast confused, discarded, mocking, injurious, vain, and full of unmitigated, unmitigated, unalloyed misery. And the Lord God will drop the curse of Malachi right down your throat. And uh, so know that anyone who stands opposed to the Lord God's end time word stands against the culmination of the spirit of all revelation, our returning Isa, Yeshua, and Jesus. So all hell, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, as his seven thunders of his amazement fall gently upon all those willing to stop being a demon, stop looking for demons under all the rock. Otherwise, if people won't stop that noise, they might as well just start flying. Don't do it. David, you've been stuck in an elevator, and you're stuck, and you can't get out, and neither can any people of religion, because the whole world is going to collapse as the great tribulation arises. But guess what, David? The Lord God Almighty has a solution. He is going to turn back the battle at the gates of hell with his Elijah tasks, uh, guy. I am Daniel, the latter-day Daniel who has embraced that destiny. I am the alcoholic David Wood of Genesis 49 12, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, but the just damn well better live by my faith, even transgressed by wine. Habakkuk 2 King James and Jewish Bible. For I am the one line by line, precept by precept, as a destroying storm, even as a hellstorm, pulling down with the uh, appointment of Jeremiah 110 in my mouth. Haggai 2 2 David, defend against that. You have no position. You have no ground to stand upon compared to me. So do yourself a favor. Pack it in. You cannot defeat me. Muhammad was right. He said there will never be another important prophet ahead. And Shiloh was never Jesus. He never had eyes red and dull of wine. And Genesis 49.12 is the same guy of Isaiah 49.4. The guy who has done everything in vain. And that's never been Jesus either. He's never done anything in vain. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed for our unity, David would, uh, within that moment of a moment, it... Uh, 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 he was knew he was sending his unity with his kingdom age covenant that is already written. That is the message of Malachi 3.1. I am your God. You are my people. And if you, the world does not accept it, then the shattering of the power of the holy people can never happen. The shattering has happened, David, already, because the cannons must open. If the cannons won't open for the very message, the, the only message that will save this earth, then kiss all of your asses goodbye, David Wood. All your religion is desolate heritage, as Isaiah 49, 8 foretold this. And everything in the word of God has been pointing towards an end time revelator that nobody can receive because it's against the rules. You can't have revelation. Wow, in the hell am I going to restore all things if I have no restoration uh, knowledge of revelation? Okay. Yeah, someone said keep it down. Anyway. Well, hey. My roommate don't like that. Anyway. Uh, love from love, hope from hope, David. And all I can say is this is uh, unwinnable, unwinnable, unwinnable challenge. So I dare you. And you know, <laughs> I'm already insulted towards you. I love you. And I ask that you would repent. And then I can agree to disagree about anything. But one thing I cannot disagree about is people who will not obey the Bible, who will not embrace all that's good of prophecy. If what I am preaching is correct, and it is, it would immediately bring world peace 
And uh, that is the part that you guys are ignoring. And this world will be utterly destroyed if you want to stay deaf to me. But I'm going to say hi to you an awful lot because you know what? You need to lose all of your subscribers because you're representing a twisted, archaic religion that has always been... Uh, Gross darkness has covered all mankind, just as Micah 4 and Isaiah 60 says. But guess what? Off of this latter-day mountain, David, of Isaiah 25, one who has come to feed the master's household meat has prepared a latter-day mountain of Isaiah 25 where there is covering with spiritual food for all people. And if you will not uh, believe in the word of prophecy, then you would be totally apostate and if you're going to do that david you know the bottom line is you can ignore me but you cannot hide from god and if you ignore me you know the bottom line is i'm just a guy i'm just a messenger of the lord of uh I, malachi uh, 3 1. if you ignore me you are flipping your own lord the finger our carpenter of the ages david uh mr david wood cannot return according to acts 321 if the restoration of his love does not come forth it cannot happen uh, he cannot return according to the word of god so if you ignore me you are ignoring christ jesus what restoration surely elijah will come first and restore all things. That is the restoration that the world is waiting for that nobody can realize. And the truth is, David Wood, that unless we beat our sword into the sickle to learn the ways of war no more, we are toast. Uh, world War III is now. Putin is the Antichrist. Mort official is the lawless one revealed. Dr. David Awar of the Repentant Prepare the Way is the false prophet calling down fire in front of multitudes of Revelation 13. And Christ is going forth uh, as the white horseman of the apocalypse and he has a bow and he has an arrow and that arrow is me Isaiah uh, 49 hidden in his quiver for the end time battle and he is fighting the black the red and the pale horse and he will have his way in the storm and the clouds will be dust under our feet uh, under his feet he is standing on the great white throne and he is put in his sickle into this world to reap it for his love. For he is the sower of the seed of love, David Wood, who has overtaken his reaper. And so in this hour, ignore me if you like, but man, this world uh, has to uh, receive something that I've done or else this world uh, time cannot be cut short, as Jesus said, because uh, to keep the canons closed when the message of Malachi 3.1 has already come to prepare his way, uh, nothing but shit pie is gonna hit us all in the eye. No birds, no fish, no mankind. That didn't happen at the first uh, uh, oblivion. No one believes the Bible, and I can't run around saying uh, the world is ending, the world is ending. No, it won't if people will receive Christ's word. So I hope somebody out there, in the meanwhile, please, all you Islamics that hear this uh, video, please share this uh, amongst all of my Islamic brethren who have their love alive. Jesus said about sin, David, would I give you a Bible lesson? He said, number one, all sin is forgiven mankind. Number two, even sin against me, which means if uh, people don't believe in him, uh, that he, uh, he's loved, uh, he's, that, that can be forgiven. What can't be forgiven is kicking out love, him in us, out of us. Uh, and uh, so every knee will bow at the name of love, never the name of Jesus. Jesus was just a distortional name for a false god with condemnation in his mouth that didn't even come forth until the 18th century. It's time for the ob obsolescence of all uh, backwards, unloving religion. The wheat and the tares cannot grow together. So wide is the way unto heaven uh, with narrow, with uh, unconditional love. Narrow is the way uh, to her blah, blah. Uh, 
wide as the way to hell. So we got to beat our sword into the sickle to change our conditional love into unconditional love. Because uh, if there's conditions at all, David Wood, there is no love at all. Unless love is faithful and loyal and long-suffering and patient and kind, it is not even love at all. So again, the whole world has a false God. He is an accuser uh, of the brethren. Uh, that is the, the God of Christianity who is a respecter of men, only loves people that believe he's loved. Everybody else doesn't, has to go to hell. So false God, and he is a false God, not being the God of all mankind. And he's a false God because he doesn't have true love. He's got false love, which is conditional love. It's never been important what we do. He was slain before the foundation of the earth, David would, and that's for all people and uh, you too. So I, I hope you will receive this and I hope David Wood, you will email me armageddon.owsley at gmail.com. I've knocked on your door a couple times and you only gave me snide, unloving remarks. Uh, I have no uh, love lost for any religious viper and snake out here, uh, condescendingly looking down. You meet people like uh, uh, in Islamic, you think they're going to hell, David. That's not what the Bible says. God says, I'm your God. You're my people. I forgive you. But the identities were switched. And in this hour, I'm here to tell you that not one Christian in this world believes literally the word of God, 1 John 4, 7. All those who love are born of him and know him because he is love. All those who have their heart as a little child. The Bible says, Jesus said uh, that uh, we must be as a little child and that we cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven unless we do become as a little child again, again with our faith in love moving. Otherwise, we could have all the religion in the world, but if we're condemning of our brothers, of other mothers, what love do we? We're as an emp empty, uh, clanging symbol people. So it's time to wake up. Iron sharpens iron, David Wood. I'm going to call you a chicken if you will not respond. I can't quite call you that. And I hope that you will, will not accept all these tags for unloving people because it is totally unloving in this day and age where it's days exactly like days of Noah and a total oblivion of man is at the door. Nothing but death is ahead of us. David Wood, did you know there's going to be seven horny men for one horny, uh, seven horny women for one horny man in these latter days? Uh, because Putin putrid, the battles of slaughter with his nuclear bombs will fall and it's going to decimate in uh, the make Europe into a vast graveyard. Moldova and Poland, watch your backs. But one thing for sure, then would come the days of uh, uh, the eyeballs consuming away in the socket, tongues consuming away in the tongue, and uh, flesh consuming away as we stand. Uh, it's the great bear of uh, Daniel 7, 5. Uh, he's been chewing on Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk, but now it's taken one other territory because that great Soviet bear is now heard in this war of World War Z, World War III. It's heard the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. And so David Wood, if you come against this message, you're coming against uh, what's necessary to pull down all distortionality. So no more would anybody be looking through a glass darkly anymore. It's time for the wise to shine as the stars uh, in these latter days of Daniel 12, 13. And I am the latter day Daniel who has embraced my destiny. And the word of God was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. And now comes the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7. And the good news is uh, Mephistopheles Beelzebub, he's been removed for a thousand years in accordance with Daniel 12, 12, 1, because he would have instantly have made our Lord God into a liar, making him unable to say unto us, I love you so much that I forgive your iniquity and will never remember. That is why he's going to be pouring out a spirit of love upon all flesh, Joel 2 and Acts 2 said for these latter days. Uh, so David would try to come against me. <laughs>